are. I am Christine Bacon here with Christine Watkins on Find Your Way Home. We decided to use a filter and she wanted to look a lot like Daniel O'Connor. Okay, it's really Daniel O'Connor that is here with me. <laughs> Welcome, Daniel. Good I'm to so be excited here. to do this with you. It's the first time you and I are meeting kind of face to face. It is. It is. It's a joy and an honor. Thank you for having me on. It is. And you know, that is one of the blessings of technology is that we can be in two different states or two different countries and we can communicate with each other. We can connect. Technology has been amazing. But there While are also a lot. coming with caveats. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We are in, I realize people, you're watching us from around the world. And so it not meant to sound offensive when I say I live in the greatest country in America, but I'm sure you may think that about your country, but let me stop and say first, arguably, Americans live in what is the freest nation in the world. And because of that, it's creating problems with many of us who are thinking, we'll always be free. We'll always have what we have. We'll always be able to say what we want to say, do what we want to do. And that's actually creating a problem because that's not how things are proceeding. Do you agree with that, yeah. Daniel? Yeah, we've become complacent. And we, in America, we don't have experience with communism. We don't, we haven't seen it happen like those, for example, in Eastern Europe have, who've given us warning messages recently because they see the signs of the times. They see what's happening in America today. And they're cautioning us that we're taking the exact same path that led to outright communism in regimes of the last century. And that's, I'll just note, that's one of the prophecies of Garabandel, that the communism will come again immediately before the morning. And I would wager that that is exactly what we've seen in America and the Western world in general in the last year, especially, last two years, last year, especially, in this relentless promotion of this mainstream narrative to the point where if you dare contradict it for a moment, if you dare contradict one tenet of the mainstream narrative, you are ostracized and condemned and persecuted. And they're doing everything right now to make sure that we can't even access anything outside of the mainstream narrative. So today we want to help you to do precisely that. Cut yeah, through that. absolutely. I have been on the air for over 10 years on my own radio show, Breakfast with Bacon, and I have never had a fear of what I say. All My biggest fear was putting my foot in my mouth. And I do, in fact, have a size nine and a half mouth every now and then. Joking, but... Um, I have been so concerned because I've been doing podcasts for about two years, and you just don't understand the amount of time that Christine and I, or Daniel and I, or any of the people that you commonly watch have to do in advance to be able to say, am I allowed to say that? Will that get me taken off the air? I've already had a show taken off the air. Daniel, I know you and Mark Mallett had a show taken off the air because of not putting out the right narrative. And that's to be concerned. So as much as we're going to talk through this, if I communicate nothing else to you watching right now, I need to communicate this. It's urgent. It is urgent. It is happening now. You must be diligent. You must know the information that you are looking for. You must know where to find it. You must know who to trust. And you cannot just be complacent. You cannot just say, that'll never happen in my country. It's happening. He says, seek and you shall find. And so again, Daniel and I have been talking for a couple hours about teaching you how to seek the proper information. And you will find it in Daniel. You wrote a brilliant article that, that really is leading into this topic about a year ago. And everything you wrote about in that article is happening. You mind telling our viewers about? Yeah. And, you know, and so we, we have to dance around things right now for obvious reasons mm -hmm. that I won't even mention. So we're going to try and uh, give you some resources to places you can go where there doesn't have to be the dancing around of topics. And, and yeah, so I wrote a post a year ago. And what encouraged me to write this post about preempting the purge, you can find it if you look up preempting the purge on Daniel O'Connor's blog, was that the leader of the free world, the president of the United States of America, suddenly was deplatformed. And this is a man, and I'm not saying I agree with everything he said or did, but that's besides the point. The point is this was a man who is the head of the most powerful country on earth, who with the click of a button and entering a few codes in could have wiped out most of the world's population. 
we can't even let him do tweets? Something is deeply wrong here. When a few unelected big tech billionaire CEOs decide that they control what the president of the United States of America can say to the very people who elected him. That was our wake up call. And that was almost exactly a year ago. So when I saw that happen, I said, all right, I've got to compile as many resources as I can to try and, and show people how to directly get to the information that they soon won't be able to access through the channels they're most used to. Because we've become complacent and lazy. You know, we're, we're so used to our social media feeds just kind of compiling it all for us, that little column on Twitter saying what's trending, telling us all that we're supposed to know, uh, whatever we search for on Google, whatever comes up there being what's important. Guess who controls all of that? The very big tech billionaire CEOs who are only interested in money, have no interest in truth, and they are in absolute control of what all of those things show up. They, they decide what goes up on your feeds and your trending thing and your search results. So we need to know how to directly get to the information that's most important to know. Yeah, there is an old, I, my PhD is in communication, and we talk about top-down information or bottom-up. And top-down is, you know, the people on the top will disseminate, oh, they need to know this or that or that. And in the past, it, it seemed unbiased, though for decades, we've already seen that it is. And, you know, well, let's tell them about this fire in this country. Let's tell them about this issue. And let's not tell them this, this or that. For instance, last year, there were over 89 fires of Catholic churches in the country. And you didn't hear it on the mainstream media. And so how do you find that information out? You got to find it out from other sources. But then you might say, well, you know, those those places, how do you know they're telling the truth? Well, sadly, you're right. You'd have to call that church and call that church and call that church and be the journalist yourself. So what we're looking at doing now is what we call bottom up information, where the people we have to start sharing information with those around us, those who are willing to hear it and giving them where are you going to go to get this information? Because there is like, a, um, you said it, Daniel, I'm just kind of say it again, because it's so important to say, instead of letting someone else decide what you're going to get and shoot the information to you and you're a passive receiver, you need to be a, what, what's a better word for yeah. that than Daniel? Well, instead of passive receiver, I mean, maybe a seeker. As Jesus a seeker. said, seek, seek and you will find the truth will set you free. Not the mainstream narrative will set you free. Not the fact checkers will set you free. No. And we're being, this is, this is a spiritual problem as well, because we're being told as, as citizens, as Christians, and even as Catholics, that our virtue, the degree of our goodness and our virtue is determined by the degree of blind trust that we put in these organizations, just assuming that they have our good in mind, assuming that they have the truth in mind. And we know that they don't. They don't even have... I mean, it's, it's a stretch to even say that they have our temporal good in mind. That itself is a stretch. And they certainly don't have our salvation and sanctification in mind. So knowing that their motives are not in line with the gospel, they're not in line with our Lord Jesus Christ, we need to, we, we need to be exorcised of this madness that supposes that they can be trusted just because they're rich in power. And it's just superlatively important today because we've got more and more of these so-called ubiqui these ubiquitous omnipresent fact checkers in the catholic world even there's all this there's these catholic fact checking apostolates today that put a little catholic spin on the worldly fact checkers but they do the exact same thing all they do is promote the mainstream narrative which has been so destructive and is about to get much more destructive yeah well who pays for those fact checkers if you do a little yeah, bit of research the there's money. a conflict of interest going in that it's like the police policing themselves you know, well, we're going to do fact checkers and we're create this own institution to let you know we're checking ourselves. We're good. Right. Right. And I think a lot of that is born out of uh, you're a little bit younger than me, probably like 20 years or so. <laughs> but when I went to school, when I was a young girl, I was born in 1964, went to Catholic school. Our priests, our religious, our leaders, our police force, they were all to be trusted, specifically in the Catholic world. Priests could do no wrong. I remember saying, I don't know if you ever thought of this as a child, but I was like, why do priests go to confession? They can't <laughs> sin, right? I mean, I was like, they're like mini gods. 
Um, but, you know, priests and, and nuns and sisters are just fallen humans like you and me. And no longer, and we've seen this, no longer can we blindly trust even that institution, which has been infiltrated by Freemasons and communists and discerning who are the good priests, who are right. not, who are the good leaders of our of our nation and our world, who are not, who can be trusted. We've got to stop having You've blind got, trust, which is so sad because I want them yes, to leave me. Blind me. Yeah. Right. And they and Jesus promised to Peter that the gates of hell will never prevail against the church. But that does not mean that every member of the church, even the highest, will be always preserved in grace. What that means is that the magisterium will always be immune from error. You read you can open up a, a Vatican Council, a papal encyclical, an apostolic exhortation, open up any of those, you can trust it. That doesn't mean that you can trust every personal opinion, even of a pope. Right. And certainly not of a bishop or a priest. So the and I'm not going to go condemning the pope here or anything. Certainly not. That's not my place. But I will say, as because it's a fact, that you are not guaranteed to remain in the truth just because even a pope said something as a personal opinion. You've got to be much more discerning than that. We're in times now. The times that we're in now, they've been prophesied for a long time. Everything we're seeing now should not be surprising to those who followed what the prophecies have been saying for a few decades now. We're in those times. We're in the most confusing times in the history of the world. But they're not so confusing that if you sincerely desire to remain on the straight and narrow way of our Lord, that you won't be able to do so. You will be able to do so if you seek. Because Jesus yeah. promised, seek and you will find. Amen. I know most of our viewers are probably familiar with um, the Fatima warnings where she told the children, if you do not repent, if the if the Pope didn't consecrate America to, or, excuse me, Russia to her immaculate heart, uh, communism would spread its errors. And the children, you know, didn't even know what communism was. They they Russia would spread its errors and they had to ask, what is the name of that? But you are also going to talk about Garabandal. That was prophesied there as well. Yes, you, the Garabandal prophecies, as I mentioned, that this this communism coming again would immediately precede the warning. And this the warning, you know, most many people who are viewing this channel probably know all about it. And I highly recommend Christine Watkins' book on the warning if you haven't, if you don't know about it. But this illumination of conscience, it will radically change everything. There's going to be a number of signs preceding it. Communism coming again is one of the biggest we have to keep an eye out for. And I, I feel like I have to throw out there just because it's so relevant today. Some other signs that, that will immediately precede the warning, the Pope going to Moscow, suddenly that's about to happen. And then as he returns, hostilities breaking out in Europe. Just look at Russia and Ukraine. We are in the times right now so now is the time to wake up now is the time to get right before god and also to start seeking the truth and stop trusting this mainstream narrative which will soon be used to promote an even more diabolical initiative than you can imagine yeah because we are one day closer to those you know times yeah the, and they're, yes. they're coming they're coming and every day is bringing us closer and we're we really close nice. now yeah. So there's a lot of people watching going, okay, great. You want me to seek? What are some best ways of seeking? So one of the things I'll start with is, for instance, I remember there are some people I was watching. I loved watching Jesse Romero. I loved watching uh, LifeSite News. And all of a sudden I realized they weren't in my feed. Mm -hmm. Well, they had been cut off by these power mongers who decided, you know, we don't want you to get the information. So I had to literally go to their site and I had to subscribe. And I know in this world where we are so used to the convenience Daniel was just talking about, stop it. Just stop it. We have to be proactive. We're big girls. We're big boys. So I am starting to subscribe to anybody whose information, who's been known to be truthful. Um, and, you know, most of them are not sending you newsletters or videos or information daily. So it's not being jammed on your throat. But I am getting it. If I feel like I have time to read it, I will. And it warns me. I'm like, oh, that's right. And so I look at things like, you know, the Epic Times and, you know, the Loop or Patriot Post. And I'm not trying to tell you that any one of them is what you should be looking at. But all I know is through my research, I have found those sources to be closer to the truth than, well, than definitely what the mainstream media is is giving me so discern 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 but start sp subscribing to those people who you trust and then ask your friends and 
people who you trust. Where do they get their information from? And Daniel, you were saying too, when I read your article on the purge, don't just read the sources of those people who you trust. Go read the mainstream narratives. Make comparisons. What do you think? Are you seeing that they're kind of close, a little bit biased? Or are you seeing, as we see a lot right now, an absolute silencing of one perspective or an absolute 180 degree paradox to what you'll see on another channel? Um, you know, right. are you seeing similar we to should, that? Yeah, we shouldn't be afraid of looking at both sides. We, we, the truth will set us free, and we need to trust that the Holy Spirit will give us the grace to discern the truth. So we, uh, we don't ever want to become ideologues, just just mindlessly promoting one narrative over another. Occasionally, the mainstream narrative will be right. Uh, more often than not, these days it won't be right. But we need to look at both sides. So yeah, check the mainstream sources as well. But uh, just as importantly, more importantly. As Christine was saying, make make this easy for you, because if it's not easy and convenient, you won't do it. You'll just think right. you'll hear it now. Oh, that's good advice, but you won't do it. Go right now to these sites and I'll, I'll share a few more thoughts with you. And these are just thoughts that go with what you want. Set up a folder on your bookmarks tab and bookmark all the sites that you want to check, maybe just quickly once a day or even once every few days. Set, put them all in the same folder in your bookmark so that you can really quickly and easily just open them up all at once and do a quick breeze through the headlines. And that will give you a sense of, of the alternative narrative, which is more often than not the true narrative today. And subscribe with your email address to the really important sites because then even if they get deplatformed from their web host provider, they can still get you the truth through your email address because they they then have your email address. And don't worry, you can always unsubscribe. These places will honor that. Sure. Um, and even if they don't, just set up a filter on your email and automatically delete anything you don't want to read, which I've had to do a lot of in my day. Um, but this way, they can uh, still contact you no matter what. Now, there will come a day, yes, probably not too long, when all of this will be futile. All the advice we're giving now will be futile. Because eventually, when things get really bad, when when the uh, the the diabolical forces assume complete control, we'll have to go completely medieval. <laughs> not not yeah. full-blown medieval, but the digital realm online will be completely... Stone controlled. and tablets or, and chisels? Yeah, stone tablets, yeah. And, you know, Amish, you know, churning butter and stuff. <laughs> but uh, we'll have to, uh, you know, we'll have to rely on community. So that's especially something we should mention. Now. Focus on real people in real life. Build up local communities. Uh, you'll find the best people at daily mass, at pro-life events, at Eucharist, perpetual adoration chapels, frequent these places, get to know the people, get in touch with each other, exchange contact information. You need to build up local communities because that's all that's going to be there for you at some point in the not so distant future, probably pretty close. In the meantime, what Christine and I are sharing with you now, this buys us some time because we're already past the point where you can't trust your feeds and the Google searches and the mainstream sources. So some sites I'd recommend, obviously, countdownofthekingdom.com. Christine's got a site, breakfastwithbacon.com. Uh, we all love Mark Mallet, markmallet.com, queenofpeacemedia.com. And sure, I'll recommend my site also, dsdoconnor.com. And we, of course, are all giving the the, the spiritual uh, take on, on matters. We're not, none of us are focusing on, on news or anything. But if you want to, uh, you'll, you also certainly want to have sources of news that are not completely beholden to the mainstream narrative. And there are many, I'll just throw a few out there. And I'd again recommend bookmarking these URLs so you can re be reminded to go directly to them without needing to be reminded of it through Twitter or Facebook or whatever else. Um, there's the epoch times.com. That's a very, uh, it's a, they're really get cutting to the truth of the matter on a lot of things, especially as, as it relates to China and whatnot. I would recommend, uh, zero hedge.com. There can be some garbage on there. Also, you, you got to apply discernment to all of this. And I recommend ad blockers also so that you're not inundated with salacious advertisements, uh, national review.com citizenfreepress.com, skynews.com, great Australian news site that often gets to the truth of the matter. If you at least make a habit of checking these and similar sites, you won't be beholden to this mainstream narrative. You'll be getting information that you won't get if you're just on social media, if you're just on CNN. 
I'd also throw out there, especially in the times that are coming now and now upon us, you'll want to get both sides of international matters. You want to you want to read the propaganda of both sides when it comes to international politics. Look at what's going on in Europe right now. So you want to check the Russian propaganda, RT.com, Russia Today. You want to check the mainstream narrative in America. They'll give you the American side. You want to check BBC News. You want to check France24.com. That's a good English news France site. It's, ma it's mainstream, but it'll give you their perspective, jpost.com. That's Jerusalem Post, Al Jazeera.com. You won't get the full truth from any of these places, but if you make a habit of, you don't, this doesn't need to be hours a day. It shouldn't. That would be horrible. Uh, just occasionally checking all of these sources will, uh, will enable you to discern where the truth is. Trust your ability to discern this in prayer with the grace of the Holy Spirit. But let me stop and let you throw some sites out there also, because I know I forgot a couple of very important ones. Well, there's probably so many, um, Daniel. We're just doing our best at throwing out the ones that we've come to trust. Also, the newamerican.com, the Loop is a newspaper I get, the Patriot Post is a newspaper I get, and of course, LifeSite News, who has been kicked off for a couple of years now. Very, very reputable groups. But I felt I was thinking of my mom when you were speaking, Daniel, because my mom always says to me, "I'm, I'm not smart. I'm not smart. I, I'm not book smart." And, and she would be hearing you say, check the source, check that, do your research. The word research would make my mom go, I'm stupid. I can't do it. So what Daniel and I are trying to communicate, and probably in a flawed way, because we're flawed human beings, but as clearly as possible, here's what I'm trying to say. If you see a story mentioned in one and not mentioned in the other, just as the plain old title of the story, wonder why. Go do some more research. If you see one article saying something goes one direction and then another one just saying the same thing goes another direction 180 degrees opposite like the sky is red and this one says the sky is blue that's all you really need to start letting the holy spirit work inside of your heart if you're seeing all of these certain um, information providers are giving us information that a whole other group aren't. And then your conscience, your spirit is saying, this seems pretty correct. Just go with that. The Lord will help you discern. You will. Daniel, thank you so much for saying that several times. With the prayer, with the power of the Holy Spirit, use that to discern. The Lord will protect you. He will. will give you information. He's not yeah. going to leave you cold. You don't have to be a PhD or a genius like Daniel. Oh, goodness, I sure hope you don't. You, you sure don't want to be like me because I'm a knucklehead. But you do my, want to discern. You're my standard. You <laughs> but you don't need to have it all figured. I don't have it all figured out, and I have no desire to because the Holy Spirit, He's going to help you to make the conclusions that you need to make. And He asks us to be prudent. He asks us to do our part, certainly, so that we don't. We're not just um, being. We're not just being lazy and being defeatist or fatalist. So we do our part. And we trust that he'll enable us to discern the truth on those matters that we have to actually make decisions on. And we can't say too many specifics right here for, again, the obvious reasons. But if you do this spirit-led discernment, checking both sides, you will be able to quite easily, more easily than you'd think, discover where the truth lies. So please do that. Please check these sources. It shouldn't be hours a day, but even every every few days, if you if you go through several of these sites, you'll be able to see, as Christine said, where the contradictions lie. If you at least find where the contradictions lie, you'll find where the points of contention are, and then you'll be able to zero in your discernment. You know, Daniel, at one point, uh, about 15, 20 years ago, my daughter took a summer internship in China, and she was working at a journalistic agency. And what that, what they hired her, brought her in for was to as they were writing their Chinese newspapers and they were translating it into different languages, and in her case, English. And her job was to read it and make sure the English was correct, you know, just phrased properly. Well, what my daughter said to me, and this was decades ago, she graduated from high school in 2002, so this would have been in between then and 2006. She said, you know, what's really funny, mom, is I was reading this stuff and it would say something like China is the best nation in the world. China's people are only this. And she said they were speaking with things that I living here knew not to be fact. And of course, she was sitting there going, 
China thinks it's the best nation in the world because I wonder if they caught what I was writing. But, you know, it was kind of an eye opener back then, but not to the degree that I'm seeing things in 20, 2022 and, and whatever year we're in now, what's happening here. Because also uh, this idea of of changing information is not new to the people in China. I just recently saw an article where they were, or it was actually a video where they were filming people in China and they had asked them about Tiananmen Square and the younger generation, the college aged and younger had no idea that the Tiananmen Square incident existed. It's been blocked out of their history books. It's been blocked out of their news. They are not allowed to talk about it. Of course, there are some families that maybe risk it and talk about it. But that is because of the influence of communism. The whole newspaper, the Epic Times, is people who were tortured in China, some of them, but they had seen communism and they escaped it to come to America to try to get out the truth. There are people from Eastern Bloc countries or Eastern Europe, who are coming to America because we are the greatest nation and they want all the freedoms. And they're saying, wake up. What we saw in our country, what we saw communism doing to us, it's now happening here in America. And many of us are saying, wow. And they're pointing out the details of what was communism and what they're seeing here. But do you know what, Daniel? I see a lot of people say, that would never happen in this country. My own daughter, the younger one's like, that's America. We've got a good nation. It'll mm-hmm. stop. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, are you kidding me? It's not like it's coming here. It is here. Right. But These it's the frog. Are- it's the frog in the pot of water, you know. And it's, it's that same analogy. If you crank things up gradually, people don't realize it. But just step out of that for a moment and imagine in 2018 going to someone and describing to him what the world, what the country would see in the next few years. He wouldn't have believed you if you told him right before COVID and all the and the, the new tyranny and the lockdowns and the draconian clampdowns on our rights. No one would have believed you if you said in mid-2019, actually, if you described 2020 and 2021. And yet we still haven't learned our lesson because people are saying, oh, no, it's right that these misinformation promoters get censored and persecuted and even fined and even in some cases thrown in jail. Oh, it's because they're they're hurting people by spreading misinformation. All right, well, who decides what the misinformation is? Uh, when, since when did freedom of speech become a suggestion? That's a right. That's one of our human rights. And if we, as the people, cannot discern where the truth lies, we're, we're, we've already lost hope. So there's no, there's no sense in supposing that we can simply restrict information and thereby preserve people in the truth. No, we have to trust that people can discern it. But that's that people don't want to believe what's happening. They don't want to believe what's already happened, in fact. It's not just that people are in denial as to what might happen. It's that they're in denial as to what did happen. I think people are, a lot of people are still traumatized from the last couple of years, and they haven't, just, they haven't even admitted what's become of the society that, that they once thought was free. So I looked at the Wikipedia page, as I was saying, for um, Adolf Hitler recently. And then I looked at the Wikipedia page for this man, and I won't even name him because who knows what that would cause to happen. But he's, just, he's a good guy. He's contradicting the mainstream narrative. He's done nothing horribly wrong. He said nothing horribly obscene. He's just a good guy who's trying to promote the truth. And I compared the Wikipedia of this guy. There wasn't a critical word about Adolf Hitler in the first few paragraphs of the Wikipedia page for him. And the first single paragraph for this ordinary guy who's just trying to speak the truth, he's done nothing wrong, almost every sentence is a microaggression, or not even a microaggression, just a a blatant attack on this man's character. If this is what they're resorting to in order to get their side of the story promoted, what do you think their motives are? And that's what we have to do. We have to look at the motives. What are the motives of those who are making billions of dollars right now in mainstream whether it's pharmaceutical or media or government or corporate, what are their motives? Con- consider what their motives might, might just be. It doesn't take a lot of speculation, by the way. And then what are the motives of those few people who are risking great persecution? Doctors, scientists, politicians. They're relatively few, but they are there. And you can easily find them if you, if you take some of the advice we've given here. What do you think their motives are? 
and exposing themselves to such slander, such persecution, fines, even imprisonment for speaking the truth. That doesn't take a whole lot of discernment to figure out. They are inspired by the truth. And that's what we need to be inspired by. It does follow the science is something the left and the right can agree on. It's just that when one side says follow the science and the other side doesn't like what they're hearing, they don't want you to follow it. They want right. you to follow the, the narrative. And, you know, I think, again, I talk about this communism thing. If my view, if your viewers here are familiar with Bella Dodd, Bella Dodd in the 1940s was a communist spy. She came into America. The communists in Russia, a Russian spy, had a written down concerted plan for how to get into America. And they had said, you know, America is just too hard to break because their faith and their families are too strong. So they wanted to infiltrate the Americans by busting into their faith and their family. Now, this is on congressional record. You can find this, and I am going to be incorrect on the year, maybe. It was somewhere between 1945 and 47, I believe, when she testified. And you can still, well, you could last week, find the audio on the internet of Bella Dodd. Type in her name. Who knows if it's still there. When Bella Dodd testified in America, in our Congress, what had happened is she told us that she was a Russian spy. She had converted to Catholicism. And when she did that, she stopped doing what she was doing. This is why she she said, I personally, there are many, many communist spies in America, 1940 already. She said, I personally am responsible for getting 1,100 men into the seminaries. I clarify that they wanted to infiltrate the Catholic Church because so goes the church, so goes the nation, so goes the world. So she said, I personally have gotten 1,100 people who will turn your thinking, who will go against theology. And she got 1,100 of them into the uh, priesthood. And she said, I already have four in the Vatican in the 40s. And so that is something Fulton Sheen, who's be a saint, had confirmed and said, you know, we need to be of this. So this isn't just Christine and Daniel talking about watching out for something. This is something that's happening that 1940s was over 80 years ago. We know that their plan of communism was being put into action in our nation. They were here then. They haven't left. And they've grabbed a hold of a lot of our um what is it, Daniel? I don't know, systems like um, education or media right. or right. entertainment. A lot of our institutions, yeah. Institutions, that's the word I was that, looking for. But I'm so glad you bring that up because before we run out of time, we should really emphasize that what we said earlier, I, I think we mentioned it earlier, that this we can trust the church absolutely, but we have to can, we have to distinguish between what Christ's promise of indefectibility to the church applies to. It applies to canonizations, it applies to the sacraments, it applies to magisterium. It does not apply to personal opinions of popes and of, of priests or bishops and not even the pope. It does not apply to those. So stick with the magisterium. If you're confused on some point in that regard, read the catechism, believe what that says. Not what some, not what any person, and I don't need to denigrate the pope to point this out. All I need to do is point out that he's not personally infallible. He's infallible by virtue of his office when he issues magisterial teachings. Before I really would, and I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling down on my other screen here because I want to find a little list I wrote recently of just a few bishops that I recommend, especially because they are the successors of the apostles. They are our shepherds, and we need to stay close to the, the true good shepherds who are leading us to salvation. And many are. I just I would just like to throw a few names out there. Not This is not an exhaustive list of every good bishop. Don't worry. But I'd especially recommend following the, uh, the teachings of Cardinal Seurat. Bishop Strickland, Cardinal Burke, Cardinal Mueller, Archbishop Chaput, Archbishop Cordelione, and I'm looking at a list here on my other screen, Bishop Schneider. Um, there's plenty of others, but there's just a few names. These are men who are not beholden to a narrative. That's that much I can say. And I'm not saying all the other bishops are, of course not. But these men have demonstrated, from what I've seen, that they are shepherds who desire the salvation of the souls of their flocks. And that is what matters. The church is supposed to change the world. 
not yes. vice versa. Yes. And that's, we are seeing the opposite today. We are having so many priests, so many bishops, and even higher up there, expecting the church to conform itself to the world. And that is a lie from self, exactly. because it must always be the opposite. And as soon as you start sensing with your Holy Spirit-led discernment that you are being asked to conform to the ways of the world in contradiction to something that relates to your salvation and sanctification, that shouldn't be difficult. Salvation, mm -hmm. sanctification, that always wins, period. Amen. Amen. Go out and make disciples of the world. Go out and preach. Go out and change the world, anytime you hear a leader saying, we need to be more accommodating, we need to listen to the people, not that you shouldn't, but we should let the people tell us what they want. No, that's not what Jesus did. Jesus saw that happening. And so he said, I've got to go down there and set them straight. They aren't going to like the, the um, unpopular truth, but their souls are more important than, as you said earlier, Daniel, than their material and their... their um, why do I always forget these words? The, the our life here on earth, right? Our material. Yeah, the world. temporal goods. The yeah. temporal. And oh my goodness. It's, yeah. And that's important, but it of course is pales in comparison to what we should know with certainty as Christians is infinitely more important. And yet we just forget. Jesus lamented of God, Louis Speaker Retta, and I did a video about her with, with Christine Watkins, you can see in the same channel here, that there are even so many priests who are uh, completely fixated on matters of the world. And they barely give a care to seeing a soul treading the path to perdition. So you need to stay close to those shepherds who care more about souls than about bodies. Not that bodies aren't important. They are. But that's how you can find where Jesus' spirit is. Primarily concern for the souls. Drop to your knees. So you're going to go, I can't do what you guys are saying. I'm afraid I won't know the truth. You know what? Drop to your knees and say, Lord, give me wisdom. You are a daughter or a son of the Most High God. He is not going to leave you nor forsake you. If you are seeking this wisdom, he'll say it in whatever way you need to hear it, in whatever language you need to hear it. I always want to kind of keep us focused on that positive note that don't, despite Daniel and I warning you as we are, and we are not trying to minimize that, don't be overly paranoid. If you are seeking truth, if you're seeking wisdom, if your heart, you're praying, you're fasting, you're going to adoration, you're doing everything. Those are the things you can do. The Lord will download supernatural wisdom and knowledge. Those are fruit of the spirit. How do you get fruit of the spirit? By getting closer to the spirit. Get into church, receive communion, go to confession, receive the sacraments. You know, my husband and I have been going to daily mass. Daniel, I heard you on a talk a while ago saying you'd been going for like 12 years before. Um, the, the pandemic happened. And so um, fortunately for us, when the pandemic happened and we have a, a Latin church here, I'd never gone to a Latin church before that was open. We can, were able to start going to daily mass. And I tell you, it has changed us. We have, the more you re receive the sacramental graces, the more, you know, the fruit of the spirit, knowledge, peace. Uh, I'm going to mess them all up. Perseverance, because I might do the fruit of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit. But the Lord is dying to give you his fruit he did die to give you this fruit so don't be overly paranoid that you're not going to know the lord will lead you just be open just be open to that god's got this god's got this anything you want to add yes. to that daniel well just the a line from the gospel comes to me and i sure hope i quote it correctly because it's not in front of me but jesus promises he says in the world you have tribulation but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. That's a promise. Yeah. And we're with him. We have overcome the world as well. Well, there is so much more information. We could talk about this for hours and days. But Daniel, you've got a good, pretty comprehensive list that people can go to to find out more. Can you direct them there? Sure. Yeah, there's a lot more that I would recommend doing. And I'll be putting up more in the future as well in my blog. But about really getting yourself ready for when things shut down even more. And it's even more difficult to find the truth. You want to get things on your hard drive. You want to have ways of communicating that don't rely on big tech. So I've put together quite a, quite a few pieces of advice on that on my post preempting the purge on my blog. You can look it up, preempting the purge, dsdoconnor.com. 
or you can just subscribe at my blog and I'm sure I'll have more coming up on that soon. Subscribe and subscribe to breakfastwithbacon.com. I will be adding information there as well, but we just want to keep you posted. Um, and it will be right underneath this video as well. Some of these, the links that we're telling you about, but keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. You know, don't be paranoid, be alert, be attentive. And um, Lord, I do want to say thank you for this time with Daniel. Thank you for the information you have downloaded into us. Thank you for all of our brothers and sisters around the world who are watching and on this journey with us, trying to learn and discover all so that we can get to eternity. That's the whole purpose of this, Lord. We ask you to guide us. We ask you to stay with us. Let us know each and every day where you wish us to journey, with whom, how to get there, and take our hands and walk us on that path. And as each and every one of us does so, we pray that you will find your way home. <laughs>